From the battles with Blockbuster to struggling with the streaming trend, today we look at the rise and fall of Redbox. Number 9. VHS Precedent Long before the large crimson kiosks seen at grocery stores and fast food stops nationwide appeared, there was Videodroid. Developed in Japan by American businessman and film enthusiast Mitch Lowe, these VHS vending machines included a variety of features to help users make their rental choice. Trailers, reviews, and even clips from entertainment news were displayed in hopes of informing customers. But after the first prototypes came to fruition in 1984, they ended up seeing little to no use with most customers, opting for the larger video stores of the time. Number 8. Fast Food Origin Redbox first began under the helm of fast food titan McDonald's in 2002, operating under the name TikTok Easy Shop. These early kiosks held a variety of products, though they didn't stay in use long before the company opted for DVD rentals exclusively in 2003. It was around this same time that former president of Videodroid, Mitch Lowe, came to work for the McDonald's Corporation as senior director and VP of operations. It's thought that Lowe played an instrumental part in getting Redbox off the ground, thanks to his experience with prior jobs in the rental industry, including a five-year stint with Netflix as vice president of business development and strategic alliances. Setting the service apart from other rental options, Redbox offered the convenient choice to return rented media to any kiosk rather than any specific one, along with the incredibly tempting starting price of $1 per night. Though they began as addendums to McDonald's locations, the rental service began to branch out with a series of experimental kiosks that offered items such as milk, eggs, and sandwiches within various grocery stores. The grocery aspect would eventually get nixed, but McDonald's realized that they had a successful new market for DVD rentals within grocery stores. Number 7. New Ownership While making the move from fast food to grocery stores, Redbox found a new ally in the form of a neighboring popular kiosk, Coinstar. In 2005, the coin exchange kiosk business bought into the DVD rental company, purchasing 47% of Redbox for $32 million. Just three years later, Coinstar would increase its share from 47% to 51%, furthering their investment in DVD rentals. And finally, in 2009, Coinstar would make the jump to full ownership purchasing the remaining shares of Redbox from the McDonald's Corporation for $175 million. As Redbox switched hands, with it went Lowe, who transferred first to Chief Operating Officer of the Crimson Kiosk business in 2005, before being named President in 2009. One of the first new orders under the helm of Coinstar came in 2010, with the added option of Blu-ray. Then, after testing video game rentals in a number of markets across the United States, the rental business added them to their services nationwide in 2011. Business for Redbox was looking brighter than ever. Number 6. Battling Blockbuster The ascent to the top of the rental kiosk chain took off right as the video rental giants of the past decade began to dwindle. Once the top dog in video rentals and sales, Blockbuster enjoyed great success throughout the 1990s, but as media began to branch into digital forms and onto DVD, the game suddenly changed. The first issue came when Warner Brothers offered an exclusive rental deal to Blockbuster as DVDs emerged in 1998. The offer would have allowed Blockbuster to rent new films for a short period of time before going to the general public. With 40% of the revenue going back to the studio, a deal Blockbuster already had in place for VHS tapes. In response, Warner Brothers lowered their wholesale prices to compete with rental companies, giving businesses like Walmart the tools to quickly surpass Blockbuster as the studio's largest source of revenue. This was a major hit to Blockbuster's sales. Heading into the 21st century, Blockbuster would also try to branch into the on-demand industry, partnering with the notorious Enron for what should have been a 20-year deal. However, they ended their deal nine months before Enron would declare bankruptcy. That same year, the rental chain would also turn down an offer to purchase Netflix for just $50 million. Internal issues, failed competitor takeovers, and more issues would plague Blockbuster until 2007, when Redbox would pass them in total number of locations. By 2012, the kiosk rental company would purchase Blockbuster Express 
for $100 million, acquiring 10,000 more kiosks, specific contracts, and the entire DVD inventory in the process. Today, Blockbuster has been reduced to a single location in Bend, Oregon. Number 5. Machinery Upgrade Part of being the leader in DVD rentals requires innovation, and that includes technological aspects. In 2004, Redbox started out using kiosks from the Silicon Valley startup DVD Play, rebranding them to fit at 140 different McDonald's locations. In 2005, though, they would exchange these obsolete machines for a custom kiosk design contracted to electronics manufacturer Selectron. This business was later purchased by Flextronics International, known for manufacturing such popular electronics as Zune, Xbox, and Xbox 360. This expertise proved invaluable when members of the Flextronics design team banded together to craft an all-new carousel design, further increasing Redbox's efficiency. These new kiosks contained less robotic movements than before, while expanding the space for stock from around 100 discs to more than 700. But perhaps the biggest upgrade came in the software, which allowed Redbox to monitor and control inventory at the various kiosks all across America. This allows for consistent weekly updates to individual kiosks, quick statistical calculations, and can even let customers reserve a copy with ease from their smartphone. Number 4. Stream Struggles While the convenience of picking up the latest new releases for a night from your local grocery store might sound easy enough, Redbox faces an uphill battle in the age of streaming. Netflix, which once specialized in DVD rental by mail, has grown to become the leader in streaming with more than 148 million subscribers around the world. Close behind them are companies like Amazon Video, Hulu, Sling TV, and many more specialized services and channels, like HBO Go, for specific forms of entertainment. The convenience of being able to sit at home and choose from massive selections of movies is just too tempting for many when compared with the hassle of traveling even a short distance to pick up and drop off DVDs. And with streaming services like Netflix able to offer an entirely different form of entertainment in the form of television shows, Redbox isn't having the easiest time keeping up. But whereas many of these streaming services offer shows and movies from all over, Redbox has been able to stay afloat thanks to new releases you'd have to pay to rent individually anyway. But that benefit will only take the kiosk company so far. Number 3. Promotional Plus In hopes of hanging with competitors as technology moves forward, Redbox has taken advantage of an age-old promotional tactic to keep customers loyal and returning, the membership. Redbox users can sign up at the company's website for perks and exclusive deals that extend both to kiosk rentals and their on-demand site. Offers such as free and reduced price rentals come often for members and for a variety of different reasons. Whether you haven't rented a film in a while, you rented many films recently, or even if you decide to rent on certain holidays, there's almost always some sort of discount or benefit to be had for active Redbox users. And while this might seem like a loss of money on Redbox's part, they still make plenty thanks to how rentals work out. Oftentimes, a customer won't realize they have a free rental until they've already found something they want, and in some cases, the free rental can be triggered by a paid rental. This often leads to multiple DVDs, or a DVD and game, or other combinations of rentals, giving customers just a bit more to enjoy than time might allow. Suddenly, that free rental you didn't have time to watch or play racks up a late fee and boom, Redbox makes their money back. Number 2. Studio Problems As DVD rental kiosks began to flourish in 2009, a small group of major motion picture studios banded together in refusing to do business with Redbox until 28 days after they've gone on sale in stores. Warner Brothers, Universal Studios, and 20th Century Fox all feared that the growing popularity of Redbox would inhibit income they had to make from DVD sales. At the time, productions from Fox and Warner Brothers composed approximately 62% of all rental revenue combined. Redbox reacted by filing lawsuits against the studios, taking all three to court throughout 2008 and 2009, citing antitrust claims. All the while, Redbox continued to carry titles from the studios in question. Rather than receiving the films directly from distribution companies, the rental kiosk business would instead purchase them from retailers like Walmart, actually saving costs in some cases. 
At the same time, studios like Lionsgate, Paramount, and Sony Pictures would sign distribution deals with Redbox, keeping the company afloat with plenty of top titles. Eventually in 2010, Redbox would settle their issues with the three top studios, agreeing initially to wait the requested 28 days to rent new releases from Fox, Universal, and Warner Brothers. Though as time went on, that wait has dropped to just seven days post-release. Number 1. The Future Despite the setbacks from where the rental giant once was, Redbox and CEO Galen Smith maintain a fairly optimistic outlook. Not ready to be written out yet, the company has added a number of options to keep customers interested over the last few years. In 2017, they launched Redbox On Demand, an updated streaming service with a different business model. Rather than requiring a membership, users can choose what they want from a selection of new releases and titles that will never make it to other streaming services, according to Redbox. At the end of 2019, Redbox announced they would be exiting the video game market in order to focus their business on movies and streaming. In 2020, they released Free Live TV, which allows users to watch free movies and TV with ads. Time will tell if updates like these will be enough to keep the film rental company moving along.